for my for the contribution to this uh, work. Um, so today I'm very happy to share our ongoing res research in our group for fracture heat and hydraulic fracture geometry characterization based on the crosswell DS data. So for unconventional reservoir development, uh, operators put a lot of effort to try to answer all these questions. How to optimize the completion and hydraulic factor designs and how to optimize the well spacing and maximize the NPV. So the key to answer all these questions, as we know, is to understand created fracture geometry during the multi-state fracturing. And they have many different ways to figure out the fracture geometry. For example, the fracture modeling, hydraulic fracture test site, and also the fracture diagnostic and so on. So today I want to talk about the one of the fracture diagnostic method, the fiber optic sensing technique. So as we know, they have the distributed te temperature sensing, distributed string sensing, and distributed acoustic sensing. So for the DS, the fibers can put in the treatment wells during the fracturing. Or recently, the operators also put the fibers in the offset wells very close to the treatment well. So this is called the cross well DS. So today I'm mainly focused on the cross well DS. So this is also called the low frequency DS. So this low frequency DS, the low frequency component is less than the 0 0.05 Hertz. So this data is capture the fracture induced rock deformation. So for example, uh, this is a treatment well, and then this is a fracture propagate. So during the fracture propagation, it will induce the rock deformation around the fracture and induce the string and uh, string rate. So for this low frequency DS data is the string rate of the fiber, but it related to the string rate of the rock near the fiber. So this is a direct institute measurement of far field string. So typically, we are using the waterfall plot to show the stream rate measured by the low frequency DS. So here, this is a plot to show the ideal waterfall plot calculated by the numerical modeling. So the x-axis is the time, treatment uh, fraction time, and y-axis is a lo uh, location, also called the channel, along the fiber. So in this ideal plot, um, usually they have two different colors. One is a red color, this indicate the extension, and another one is a blue, it indicate the compression. So before the fracture hit, as the fracture approaching the fiber well, so the on the fiber on the fiber, the extension is induced and extension is gradually increased. And ideally, usually it can form this heart shape um, pattern. Once the hydraulic fracture hit these fibers, then you can see the color is suddenly changed from the red to the blue. So it changed from the extension to the compression. And just right on the fracture, that still is the extension. And this strip, the size of the width of the strip is relative to the gauge length of the fiber. So the resolution of the fiber. And also this compression zone is decay as this hydraulic fracture propagate away from this fiber well. So here, this is a recent published the cross wheel DS data field cases. So from all this plot, you can see the fracture heat is not very easy to identify, especially for the multiple fracture case. So the current status of this um, new technique is large amount of the cross wheel DS data already uh, acquired by the operators. And also the measured um, stream rate response show various characteristics. And their current research is mainly focused on the quantitative field uh, data interpretation. So the objectives of our research the first is to better understanding and utilize this uh, data set for quantitatively hydraulic fracture geometry characterization. So for our research, we are not only to using this data set to quantify the fracture heat and uh, location and the time, we also want to maximize the business value of this data set. We want to uh, using this data set to, get, to get more information of, of the fracture geometry. So here, this is uh, what we are uh, focused on. First, we want to understand the fundamental mechanism of this stream rate response near the, um, on, on the fiber. And another uh, second one is to characterize the hydraulic fracture geometry quantitatively. Lastly, we want to develop practical workflow for the field applications. 
And this is our uh, workflow for this DAS data interpretation. So first we develop a forward model. So we based on the 3D displacement discontinuity method to calculate the displacement and string and string rate on the fiber. So we're using this forward model to understand the mechanism of string rate during the fracturing. And also using this model to propose some guidelines for the fracture heat identification. And then we based on this forward model to generate a green function, and then we developed an inverse model. So we're using this inversion model to calculate the fracture width and fracture height, and also predict the fracture length. And lastly, we uh, based on the forward model and inverse model to develop our tool package, and then it can be very easy to do the field application. So here, this is our published papers. And if you want to know more details about the research um, in this topic, so uh, you can go uh, refer to uh, these papers. And also uh, this year, um, in May 4, uh, May 4 and 6, uh, we will have another talk in the Hydraulic Fracture Technology Conference. So now I first, I want to show the mechanism of string rate based on our forward model. So we start with a very simple case, a single fracture. So here, this is the injection well, and this single fracture, we using our fracture propagation model to simulate the length of this is 78 meter. And then we put three uh, monitor wells. So the monitor wheel one is at the location of 30 meters away. And then the module wheel two is right at the tip of this um, hydraulic fracture. And then we have module wheel three and it's 100 meters away. And this is how the half fracture half length changing with the pumping time. So you can see around less than 10 minutes, this hydraulic fracture hit the module wheel. And now about uh, six minutes and then it reached module wheel two. So now let's see the um, string and string read response at each monitor wheel. So this is a monitor wheel one. So here you can see this is a displacement, uh, string and string rate changing with the time along the monitor wheel. Y axis is along the monitor wheel. So you can see uh, here, this is right the fracture hit the uh, fiber. So once the fracture hit the fiber, the string and string rate plot from suddenly change from the extension to the compression. And then we can look at the monitor wheel two. So monitor wheel two is um, right at the fracture tip. So you can see here, we can see all the extension and just fracture heat around here, they have some um, compression. And lastly is the monitor wheel three. So in the monitor wheel three, since the fracture is not hit this monitor wheel, so you can, we can see this is all show the extension. And then next I will show four fracture cases. So here, these four fracture case propagated simultaneously. And then the monitor wheel is uh, put uh, 50 meters away of the treatment wheel. And here, this is a fracture one, two, three, four. And then you can see this is calculated a string rate. So you can see the fracture two is the first one hit this monitor wheel. And then this uh, from the extension to the compression. And then follow that is a fracture three hit the monitor wheel. And then finally fracture one and four. So here you accept this uh, hot shape and then change to the blue. And also when the fracture three hit the monitor wheel, you can see the fracture two start to closing because here this extension is decreasing, it changed to the blue. And also same thing you can see here when the fracture four hit the um, monitor wheel, the fracture three start to closing. So this is a four fracture case. And also we look at some literatures uh, from the, this paper published by the uh, Gustavo in 2019. He showed a plot for the four fracture case. So this four fracture case is cluster spacing is 50 meter. And he provides some information about the treatment such as the injection rate and injection time. And here, this is the uh, waterfall plot of the screen rate. So what we do is we're using all the information he provides in the paper, and then we assume uh, the parameters that he did not provide it, and then try to match his uh, waterfall plot using our forward model. 
So we look uh, into his um, what for plot uh, for these four cluster case, the three fracture heat is uh, found, and then the monitor wear is 200 meters away. And this is a fracture, heat, the first fracture heat, and then this is the second one, this is the third one. And also you can see here they have some blue and here they have the red is um, stopped here. So what we do is using the model to, to try to match and this waterfall plot. So here, this is what we calculated. So you can see this is the first fracture hit, and this is the second one, this is the third one. And also we capture these um, blue areas when this fracture, fra the fracture, uh, fracture hit three, uh, fra the third fracture hit this uh, monitor wells and here they show some blue. This show the fracture is closing or the fracture might be stop, a stop propagation. So after we match this uh, what for plot patterns, and then we can directly get the fracture width distribution for these four fractures and how this four fracture, the length of the four fracture change with the time. And also this is our calculate the string and displacement. So this is, uh, and the ne next we using our forward model to study the fracture width and the height. So we want to look at how this width and height affect the strain rate pattern. So from here, you can see the larger width will be given the larger size of this heart shape and also larger size of this compression zoom. And also we look at the impact of fracture height. So similar trend, we can get larger height, will be given larger this um, size of a heart shape and the compression zone. And also for larger height and a smaller height, you can see the pattern of this um, stream rate is also slightly different. So from this analysis, we can see it is possible for us to, um, to using this stream rate data to, to calculate the to calculate the fracture width and height because these two parameters is how big impact of the um, of the stream rate data. And next, we based on our forward model to provide some guidelines for accurately identify the fracture heat using the low frequency DS data. So here we using uh, we generate synthetic case with four fracture clusters um, propagated simultaneously, and the cluster spacing is twelve meter, and the gauge length is five meter. And then we calculate the waterfall plot, and then after we get the waterfall plot, we calculate these three parameters along the um, along this channel. So we calculate the maximum strain rate and the summation of the strain rate and the summation of the strain rate and absolute magnitude along each channel. And then we get this three feature plot. And then we can find at the fracture heat uh, channels, these three variables show the peak values. So this indicate if we have the field mirror data, we also can plot these three lines. And then if they have show local peak values, that might be the fracture heat location. Okay. So this is a guideline from the forward model. And the next I want to show our inverse model. And then we using, first we also generate some synthetic case to test our inverse model and show the validation. Uh, first, we also start with a single fracture. So for this single fracture, fracture geometry is simulated by, by our in-house simulator. So here, these two wells is 100 meters away, and the real-time string is calculated by our geomechanics model. And then we're using this string to inverse fracture widths. And when we get the fracture width, we will compare with the fracture width we generated by our simulator. Okay, so this is a way we are, we try to validate our inverse model. So here, this is the width um, um, along with fracture half lens uh, changing with the time. So the monitor wheel is 100 meters away. So you can see here at this time, the fracture hit the monitor wheel and then the fracture continue to propagate. So this is a fracture width profile. And then we get the fracture width at the monitor wheel so here, this is the width with worse the injection time just at the monitor wheel. So the fracture width is gradually changed. So it's, this line is corresponding the point along here, along this black line. So the black line here in this plot, this black line is the value, true value provided by the simulator. And then here, this blue triangle is calculated by our inverse model. 
So from here, you can see they have very good match. So this is for single fracture case. And also we want to show the four fracture case, the multiple fracture case. So for this case, the spacing between these two wheels is 150 meters and the cluster spacing is 25 meters. And the same thing, we're using our hydraulic fracture simulator to simulate this fracture and get the fracture width and also calculate the string waterfall plot. And we're using this string waterfall plot to calculate the width and then compare with the widths we generated by the simulator. So this is the um, widths calculated by the, you know, by the inverse model and the true widths. So here, this plot is the summation of all the widths for the four fractures. So you can see before, right before the 20 minutes, this width is zero. So that means these four fractures have not hit the monitor well yet. But right um, before 20 minutes, they have two after fracture hit the monitor wheel. So you can see the fracture width is gradually increased. And then uh, when the two inner fractures hit the monitor wheel, you can see the, they have the slope change and then the width is continue to increase. So this width is just right on the monitor wheel, okay? And also we can um, get the width for each fracture. So here, this black is the width of to outer fracture and the red is the width for two inner fracture. Since this is a symmetric case, so the two inner fracture and two outer fracture have the same widths. But from here, you can see we get a very good match for um, true widths and the inverted widths. And also here, this is a string uh, versus the location. Um, the black line is the calculated string, uh, black line is a true string, and then the red dot, red dot is the, uh, the string we calculated. So also you can see at these two different times, it have very good match. So that's all about our, um, that's all questions. Okay, so that's all about our forward model and inverse model. So we're using forward model to understand mechanism to propose some guideline. And also we um, uh, validate our inverse model uh, through the synthetic case. And then we develop a tool package based on this forward model and inverse model and then to do the field application. So now I want to show using this tool package to do the field, case, field application in the unconventional shear formation. So this is a treatment wheel and this is a monitor wheel. So these two wheels is a one, uh, 1300 feet away. And then these two wheels is in the same depth. So the azimuth of these two wheels is about 140 degrees from north. And we have data for these four stages. And the, each stage, they have eight provision clusters and the cluster spacing is about 22 feet. And for the DS data, we get the gauge length is five meter. And then first we want to do the fracture heat identification. So, and then we're using our guidelines proposed by the, by our forward model. And then we zoom into this um, data. And then we also plot these three feature plot, the maximum string and the summation of the string and the summation of the absolute magnitude of the string. And then we try to pick the local uh, peak values for all the three um, plot. And then we identify the five fracture heat in the current uh, stage. And also we find out uh, they have some fluid leaking from the current stage to the previous stage because in the previous stage we also see they have three fractures is reopened because you can see they have the uh, red color that means the extension the the opening of the previous fractures. So then we summarize the clusters, uh, the eight clusters. They have five clusters. It have fracture hit. So that means they have five five clusters. Uh, the fracture can propagate 1,300 uh, feet away. And also we summarize the fracture heat time during the treatment. And then based on the fracture heat time, we can um, using the empirical model to predict the fracture half length in the final fracture half length. So this plot is to show the fracture half length changing with the injection time. So we can see the longest fracture half length is about 1,800, 1800 feet and the shortest is 1,300 feet for this five fracture heat. But for this three uh, does not have fracture heat and then we cannot do any prediction. 
And then we repeat this process for another three stages. And from the FRAG report, we can get the provision locations for all these, um, for all these stages. And then we can find out the factor hit location in these um, monitor wheels. So then we connect each of them together and then we can find the factor propagation direction is uh, almost normal to this effect to these wheels. So the fracture is planar and also normal to the horizontal wheelbone. And for these four stages, we find um, four to five fracture heat per stage out of the eight clusters I identified in the monitor wheel. And also you can see one or two um, toe clusters. So this is the toe. Toe clusters usually is not, um, you really cannot reach the monitor wheels. So this might be because of stress shadow from the previous stage. And then after we identify the fracture hit, next we want to use in our inverse model to calculate the fracture uh, width and height. So for inverse model, we are not using the stream rate data, we're using the stream data. So we need to integrate the stream rate data over the time. So this is the stream rate data. And then we integrate it to get the stream data. And then we cannot using all of this stream data because uh, some string data cannot be accurate measure, especially around, especially at the fracture hit location, because once the fracture hit the uh, monitor wheel, they have most um, time, it can be possibly have the debonding between the fiber and the, and the rock. So we think that data might be not accurate. So for this inversion, we exclude that data set. So we're only using the data on two sides of the fracture. So we exclude the data right on the fracture heap. And then we using our inverse model to calculate the string. So this is a measured string and this is a calculated string. So, and also we show some details at different time. So this is the, the black line, that's the string, we, um, the two measure string. And then this red line is a string we calculated. So you can see we match this string well, well. And, but also we are not over, over matching some of this noisy. And after we match this uh, string data, and then we can get the fracture widths. So first I want to show the total fracture widths for all the uh, fractures, including previous fracture and the uh, previous state and current state. So here you can see this is the treatment data, the injection rate and accumulative injection volume. So right at, at about 50 minutes, the fractures in the current state start to hit the monitor wheel. Before that, you can see the width is increased. So this width increase is because the previous fractures, uh, previous, uh, the fractures in the previous stage reopen. And then once it's the, the fractures in the current stage hit the monitor wheel and then the fracture is greatly increased. And also we can separate the, uh, the width in the previous stage and in the current stage. So you can see in the current stage before the 15 minutes, they have no, um, no fracture width at the monitor wheel because it does not hit it. So the fracture width is zero. And then once it hit, it gradually um, increased. And this is the previous stage. Before hit, it reopened. But once the, the fractures in current stage hit, and then here has the, a little bit of decrease, that means this fracture is start uh, closing. And also we can separate the uh, each fracture hit. So here, this is a fracture width for five fracture hit in current state. So you can see these two fracture hit, the width start increase and then decrease. So it means it start um, opening and then close. And then these three is um, continue to increase. So it's continue to open. So these three we find is close to the here side. And then the maximum width, it can be reached about 0.4 millimeter. So this 0.4 millimeter is the width at, um, 1300 feet away at the monitor wheel. Okay, so this width is not at the well, at it's not at the treatment wheel. It's uh, 1300 feet away. And also, this is a fracture width in the previous stage for each fracture. So we show how it changed, and you can see the roughly the width is about 0.2 millimeter. 
And after we get the fracture width, we're using the fracture width, and then we match the stream profile at the end of the injection, try to get the estimated fracture height. So our method is we match this stream profile and get the minimum absolute value. And then when it reaches the minimum absolute value, we assume that's the average average created fracture height. So for one of these state, we find the fracture height is about 18, um, yeah, 18 meters. So this uh, result we compare with some literature published by the Congo Phillips. So it's uh, pretty consistent with the conclusion they get it. So yeah, that's, that's all about my uh, research on the research um, about the DS in our group. So now I want to summarize it. So first we develop a forward model to understand the mechanism of string rate response. And then we propose some guidelines for the fracture heat detection. And then we based on our forward model, we develop an inverse model to directly calculate the time dependent widths. We can calculate the, how the widths changing with the treatment time at the monitor wheel. And also we can estimate the height by the, um, this uh, inversion. And then using this uh, tool package, we do the field application. So here, this is some conclusions we can get from this field application. So for example, they have four to five fracture heat after the eight clusters. Mm. And also the fracture width for the um, current stage, it can reach to 0.4 millimeter. And the toe side fracture widths are smaller than the high heel side fractures. And also they have, we find for all these four stages, we always find they have leakage from the current stage to the previous stage. And the reopen of the previous stage is 0.2 millimeter. And also here, the created average fracture height for all these five fracture height is approximately 80 meters for one of the state. So, and currently our group is uh, actively looking for the um, uh, looking for the data to continue to further test our workflow and our forward and inverse model. So if you have this data set, uh, we are very happy to take it and then to, to, to use it and test our algorithm. Okay, so yeah, so that's all my talk. And then now uh, I'm feel free to answer, uh, feel free to ask questions and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fascinating. Um, th and there are a few questions. Um, and, and, and Con, I'll just, I'll just sort of walk through what I see on the chat. And yeah, I also can see uh, in the chat. Okay, so, so the first one is, is related to the, the potential of, uh, of, of of using um, high resolution borehole imaging. Okay, so this is how you consider using high resolution. Uh, so I, I, I read out the questions, okay? So first question is from Andy. Have you considered using high resolution borehole image to visualize the frag communication to the target wheel or does the placement of fiber preclude that? Um, so right now we only have the DS data set, the cross wheel DS data set. So we don't have the, um, the high resolution boho images. Uh, so right now I'm talking to some operators. Hopefully we can get more um, data set except this cross wheel DS and then we can cross validate with each other. Yeah, so that's the first question. And this is from Gandalf about the question. And this is from Rob. And does your forward model assume linear elastic fracture mechanics? Yes, we're using the boundary element method. That's the linear elastic fracture mechanics. And if so, how would the predict the string rate field water flow by affected if that doesn't assume? Uh, I think most of the time for the for hydraulic fraction, I think uh, domain and we currently um, always assume linear elastic is good enough to calculate the deformation of the rock and think it would be better or worse match to the accurate uh, stream rate data. Um, the, the, if, if they cannot uh, match, exactly match the field data, it have a lot of other reasons. They might have temperature regions or might have some um, uh, um, uh, completion near the well bore uh, uh, reasons. And a lot of reasons, it might be, could be because uh, the rock is not perfectly elastic. I think this, that's uh, our, we current, this is kind of our preliminary result. We're working on this topic for two years. We definitely will continue to work on this and try to um, using our forward model to include more um, factors, for example, temperature effect. And then maybe we can also include some uh, nonlinear effect and then see how they will be affect the stream rate response. Okay. And 
um, from the Mark Law, and you have um, Mike Mark Law have two questions. Um, many people interpret all these offset fiber observations as indicate most mostly planar and linear fracture propagation with minimal horizontal branches and a no wide fracture fairway like Fisher described. And what are your view on that? Um, yeah, I think this is, um, I think this is depend on what kind of which um, basin or unconventional reservoir you talk about. For this data set, I'm working on the, uh, actually from the data you probably already can tell is Eagle for data set. So uh, for Eagle for data set, what I see most of paper is probably yes, it's kind of planar. But for some other data set, for example, the Marcellus, um, the, the stretch shed, Marcellus, they have a lot of nature fractures uh, we can see from the outcrop. So that might be not um, uh, perfectly planar. So I think it really depends on which uh, unconventional reservoir you are talking about. I'm not saying all the reservoirs that should be perfectly planar, but uh, I, I would like to, to get more data set from different reservoirs and then we will see, okay? And I have heard from many, I heard companies that they trust the string rate values string rate values, but the data is not accurate enough to provide estimate for string itself. What, what are your views? Um, right now, we are, you can see we are using the uh, string rate data to integrate, uh, to get the string, and then we, we inverse it to get the fracture width. So overall, we think uh, this string data is um, accurate enough to, to to uh, provide us for us to do the calculation. So you can see we exclude some data uh, for string data because we know that some data may be not accurate enough, but I think the overall is especially the strings um, on two sides of the fractures of the stress shadow part, I think it should be good enough to recalculate the, uh, the, uh, the fracture geometry. And you can see the widths we inversed is about the 0.4 millimeters uh, for this uh, case. And then I, I think in the future, we want to get more data of different diagnostic method, and then we can validate with, with each other and make sure uh, this is good enough to use. And also, uh, I know the fiber technique is also kind of improved, and then they have, so for this data set, the gauge length is five meter. Um, in the future, maybe have uh, like a smaller gauge length, like one meter gauge length, or even smaller, 0.2 or something um, gauge length. Then for the data set, I think it will be even more uh, accurate to get the string. So we develop this uh, inverse algorithm and then once we can get more accurate string data and then we can get more uh, fracture geometries. Yeah. And then the next is the waterfall water field data shows a lot of more string change worse time than the elastic DDM model. Is this because of noisy in the injection schedule or because the real situation exhibit more geometric complexity in hydraulic fracture development, or it can be cause of the heterogeneous and a highly and uh, satisfied nature of rock, why of course will be uh, tend to influence the fracture complexity. Yeah, I think so, because you can see from my model, forward model, the stream rate plot, waterfall plot is very ideal and it's very clean. But when you look at the real measure data, it have a lot of noise. That could be a lot of reasons. So I think this definitely need more research and more uh, complex or more comprehensive geomechanics model. So then we can study um, what's the mechanism or why we can have a lot of noises in the real data. Okay. Um, and next, how you got location of the fresh heat on monitor wells is a monitor well. Uh, so first question, how get the location of the fresh heat on monitor well? So you can see we're using our forward model to propose some guidelines. So we um, plot that uh, three uh, a future plot, the maximum string rate and the, uh, the summation of the string rate and the summation of absolute string rate. And then we can, based on the three line data to pick the peak values. And then we think that's the location of the fracture heat. And also we're looking at our waterfall plot. So this is kind of, um, it's, it, it depends on who you are looking at this wall plot. So if different en um, engineers, you might get different uh, conclusions. Um, for the location of the fracture heat time and 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 uh, numbers of the fracture heat. So this is also uh, it, as like if the we can get better fibers, the smaller gauge length, then we can get better um, 
of waterfall plot, and then we'll become get easier to do the fracture heat. And is the monitor well uh, uh, sealed well ball or already a fracture well? Yeah, this is a very good question. So for this cross well, uh, cross well uh, DS, if you want to get the fracture heat information, it requires this uh, monitor well should not be fracked. So once if it is already fracked, then it kind of you already damage uh, your near well bar region of this monitor where you already have a lot of fractures. So then if you are, uh, if you, the adjacent the treatment will frag, then the, usually we cannot get very good uh, DS data. So we are, we also get a lot of um, DS, uh, the low frequency DS data and some actually is happen like this, the well is already fracked. So once the real well is already fracked, and then that DS data, low frequency the DS data, we look at it and actually we cannot get any good information, but we, we might can um, double check of that. But uh, at this moment, uh, we just get the conclusion is if it's a fract, really it cannot give us the good uh, information about the fracture heat, okay? And hello, Dr. Wu, and can you please explain more about the street stress shadow near the toe of the well uh, cases with four clusters? Um, more about stress shadow near the toe of the four of, uh, of the well case with the four cluster. So here is because we're from these four stages and we, uh, we find out um, most of the fracture heat, the fracture can propagate um, 1300, 1300 um, feet away. That's uh, the clusters close to the, close to the heel. And then they have one or two the fractures close to the toe or cluster of close to toe usually cannot propagate very long. So then we think this is made because of the stress shadow from the previous stage. So that fracture cannot propagate, um, uh, propagate along as the fracture close to the toe, uh, close to the heel. Okay. And what's, what are the limitations and the capabilities of the a numerical simulation approach in the presence of pre-existing nature fractures. Um, yeah, so for this one, um, right now we have not considered the pre-existing nature fractures. So for for uh, for our model, we we have that capability to deal with the nature fractures. So actually, this is uh, our next step. We want to include the nature fractures. If your nature fracture have the shearing or the nature fracture is changing the hydraulic fracture orientation, and we want to see uh, what's the string rate response, and then we will be compared with the field data measurement and see whether the nature fracture will be affect the measured string uh, uh, DS data. Okay. Um, and um, could you uh, could you explain how you get the fracture width value from the stream inversion? Um, yeah, so here we that's a more detail about our inversion model. So if you want to know more details, you can go to our uh, papers. Uh, come, we have published two SPG journal papers about how we get the fracture width from this stream inversion. So the general idea is. We using our forward model to build a green function, and then using the green function, uh, we using the the uh, the stream data, and then we can recalculate the widths along the along the fiber wheel. Okay. Uh, from the Dr. Austin, my previous supervisor, my PhD supervisor. Yeah. Uh, I'm also interested if you see evidence of branch as asked by um, uh, Mike Michael. Yes, I, I want to do more research on this, especially we want to get more data set. So if we can get data set from the other um, uh, field and other formations, then maybe we can see some branch. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to try to see the evidence of this. And the next questions. Can you explain, uh, can you please explain what you mean by the leaking to the previous stage? So, because we see um, they have some reopening of the previous stage. So that means that some fluid during the, we frag the current stage, some fluid is leaking into the uh, previous stage. So that's uh, what, what I mean. And is it leaky, leakage through the plug or can it be communicated in a future network away from the well wall? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. We, we talk about this after we find out they have a leakage for every four, for all the stages. And then we talk to the operator, say, hi, you can see your plug seem like it's not well. 
he said it's plug or it's because some other reason or it's because behind of the uh, wearable because of debonding or because of the network because of the fracture communicate uh, uh, within the reservoir. So this is uh, just based on these four stages, we do not conclude our conclusion, but we think most probably is maybe because of their plug. So we want to see more of their data. They probably will provide us uh, more uh, data of the state, uh, more stages. Then we can get a final conclusion about this. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you. Thank you for sharing this great work. Can you explain why the widths of some fracture keep increasing quickly after pumping stop? Um, yeah. So we see some uh, after pumping stop. Some fractures continue to uh, open uh, a little bit, and some fractures start to uh, some fractures start to close. So this, I, I think, is like when you roughly uh, right after you stop, um, they still have some pressure within the fracture. So the fracture maybe still can continue to propagate a little bit. But we also some some see some fracture after uh, shutting, and then the fracture right up right start to closing. So it it mixed. We see both uh, continue to open and also directly start to closing. Okay. And, and yeah, I think, uh, okay. So how sensitive is your inversion approach to the mechanical properties of the rock? Um, yeah, so here when we build the green functions, so we need to include the uh, Young's module. So because we're using the linear elastic um, theory, so here the main rock properties is the Young's modulus we included here, and Poisson ratio. So that this will be because a different Young's modulus and Poisson ratio will be changed the uh, deformation of the um, affect the deformation of the rock. So that will be affect our um, result, the, the the inverse fracture waves. Um, so in slide 31, the change in fracture width as a function of time shows significant change. Have you compared this change and needed net pressure change in each fracture to the major fracture treatment pressure change in extra drop uh, if assume planar fracture? Hmm. Yeah, this is a very good point. I actually, we haven't uh, compared it yet. Yeah, once we get the... Um, Fracture widths, and then we just uh, we think it looks like reasonable, but we do not uh, take a look their treatment pressure. Yeah, I, I think we definitely can do this. We have their treatment um, treatment pressure uh, data, so I think yeah, I can ask my graduate student to look at this. We can see whether they can have some relationship. Yeah, good point. Um, okay, Robert, that's that's it. Uh, okay. Uh, would you uh, expect a change in the string response if the fluid only or fluid with the propen are interacting with the monitor well? Um, I think if the with, yeah, I think if without, because here uh, our string rate response is mainly because of the opening of the fracture. So if they have only fluid, the fracture opening may be smaller than the fracture with the propen together. So that's currently, I think I can uh, think at top of mind. Uh, yeah, uh, if they have proper, maybe we can get larger widths and then they have a larger string rate response. Mm -hmm. And thanks for the talk. Were you able to gain insight into proper distribution using your approach? Um, proper distribution, I think, Mm, currently, because we can inverse the fracture width, and then based on some general rule, for example, the fracture width is small; it should be larger than three times of propen. Then propen can um, pass through it. So this maybe I think can give you a general general guideline. For example, the propen my the width uh, predict is 0.4 millimeter in 300 feet away, and then you can compare with your proper size, and then you can predict whether the proper can pass through, pass through this area. So I think can give you a general guidelines about whether proper can reach this at this point, can reach that far. Mm. Okay. Have you compared microsites may respond to the low frequency string observations? So for this uh, field data, we, we do not because uh, this will, they only have this data. They do not do the micro seismic. But I think in the future, we should get uh, more data set with, uh, they have different diagnostic method. 
Okay, and this. Um, most of the reservoirs have some nature factors. Have you considered the effect on your modeling? We can we already have the hydraulic fracture uh, already have nature fracture in our forward model hydraulic fracture simulator. But uh, for this DS data interpretation, we have not considered this yet. But I think that's our future work. That's we definitely need to look into it. Um, and hi Khan, nice work. Uh, what I heard is that the fiber are and wheel are coupled by friction. I expect some sliding of the fiber inside the wheel after the fracture heat. This could potentially affect the integral string characteristic after the heat and therefore your interpretation. Wonder what are your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, we, uh, because I collaborate with the uh, professor in the Colorado Swarm Mine, his actual expertise is uh, working on the fiber and we discuss a lot um, about this topic. Um, on the fracture, right on the fracture heat location. Um, we think that's the, the, the stream measure, it probably most by a larger chance is not right. It may be, it's not safe to use. For the reason, um, we think it maybe have the bounding. It might be have some uh, sliding or some, yeah, some other reasons. I, I think th this is something op op open to, to, the, to discuss, yeah after we have more data of this uh, crosswear DS. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for the presentation. I have two questions. I'm curious about your thought on whether if the stream, stream, fiber stream rate data can be corre correlated with the closure pressure. Uh, yeah, this, I, we haven't think about it whether the fiber string rate can collaborate with the, with, with the clo closure pressure. Because we calculate the width and then the width can, um, if we're using width, we can roughly estimate the net pressure. And then based on the net pressure and wear head treatment pressure, maybe we can also interpret, get some information of the closure pressure. So this is, I can think about it right now. We might be can get some of information about the closure pressure. Okay, and did you see or heard about any isolation issues at the observation well later during its treatment due to the earlier fracture heat? Um, this we haven't looked into it because we get the data of the monitor wells and then after we get the data, we finish this measurement and then I think the operator will frag the, this monitor well, but they haven't reported any issues or things um, yeah, yeah, at least I, I, I can talk to, to the operators after, uh, after this meeting and how they deal with that monitor wheel and do they see some progress for this monitor wheel after a fracture heat. But I think if you have the fracture heat, it definitely will be affect um, the fraction later on for this monitor wheel. Okay, and interesting, leave us with many open questions to reach research on. Yes, yeah, definitely. And thanks for the presentation. Any comments on complica uh, com complications if the fracture is at the angle to the fiber, uh, mean fracture is not orthogonal to the monitor wheel. Uh, yeah, so this right now you can see, actually right now our research is doing pretty perfect situation, like very ideal situation. The two wheel is perfectly parallel to each other, monitor wheel and monitor wheel and a treatment wheel, and also they are in the same depth. So we want to look at uh, in the future, for example, these two wheels is not in the same depth and also these two wheels is not perfectly parallel. So this is a, yeah, we, we, we need to work on this also. Very good question. Mm. Uh, please, uh, people have started working on institute uh, collaboration of a DS getting the true stream rate is coming. Yeah, that's, that will be great. Yeah, I think that's, um, if we can get that, then it definitely, we can want to try to, to use this to, um, in our inverse model. A great uh, general question for your model. If the number of the fracture in each from the wheel is different from those simulated, how can we come up a uh, correct fracture geometry? Um, yeah, so for this, I have to say, from this cross D DS data set, I'm not saying just based on this data set, we can get complete fracture geometry. Actually, for this data set, the main um, data, uh, main information, or I'm confident with, 
is the fracture geometry near the mountain wheels and the fracture hit time and location. So for the fractures, if it do not hit the mountain wheels, actually, I don't have any information about that. So uh, based on that, I think we cannot get completely information on fracture geometry. So if we want to get um, more information on fracture geometry, we probably need more fracture diagnostic method and then combine them with together, such as micro seismic and some tracers and so on. So for this, I'm focused on the fracture geometry just at the monitor wheel, okay? And uh, hi, Kang, did you find if the locations of fracture heat on monitor wheel aligned it with the cluster location on, um, with the cluster location on treatment wheel? Yeah, so for the data I studied, you can see is they are pretty, um, we connect them together, it's kind of fracture is perfectly, almost perpendicular to the, to the wheel board. So, and then we can predict from here for the case I studied is um, planar fracture. And here, how do you approach the non-unique problem in your inversion? Yeah, so that's that's very good question. So actually, do I here? I actually do not give any details about our approach. I mainly just show the validation and the result of an inversion model. So actually, when we develop this inversion model, non-unix is a problem we need to deal with. So the details you can also you can refer to our paper. So here for the unix, uh, we we make some assumptions. We make some assumption based on some like general um, knowledge of hydraulic fraction, I think. I think the fracture, maybe a fracture is like an elliptical. And also here we assume uh, the, especially when we do the fracture height, we assume that the, the, all the five fracture heat have the same fracture height. So that's why I said our average created fracture height. So definitely behind this, we have some assumptions here and then we try to remove some new and uh, uh, non-unique, non-unique um, solution. Okay, for example, a string and a swarming could produce the same measured effect as the single fracture. Yeah, so currently you can see for this, the string, the gauge length is five meters. So that means within the five meters, we just average. So we only, the resolution of the fiber is five meters. So for the swarming uh, published by the Conical Phillips, the, the swarming is usually within um, one or two feet. So that means here, we just uh, average this, uh, or this fracture opening together within this five meter, okay? So I may expect in the future, we can have a much smaller gauge lens and then maybe we can get more information about this swarming effect, okay? Can you offer bound on this possibility space? Um, like I said, this is actually not for modeling, it depends on the measurement. We, we hope we can get a much smaller gauge length of the fiber. Okay, and Dr. Wood, thanks for the presentation of the excellent work. Have you considered continue this approach to the flow bag, flow bag of the treatment wheel after the fracturing? Um, because this um, flow bag, um, I, I think right now for the cross wheel DS data is mainly uh, measured during the treatment. And also they have some data right after shutting, shut, shutting time, but not very long because I know uh, this fiber, I heard from the operator actually is pretty expensive. You, uh, you measure, the longer you kept, you, you get this, acquire this data, a DS data, then the more money you pay. So usually the operator, they, they don't want to wait very long for the flow back. They only measure during the fraction and then maybe two or three minutes after the shutting and that's it. So right now I don't have flow back data. Do you think it would be possible to see the decreasing fracture width as a result of the flow back? Yes, I, I think so. Yeah. After the shutting and flow back, the fracture should start closing. And then uh, you can see the red color will be changed uh, change to the blue. And then red color on the fracture will change it to blue and on two sides of the fracture from the blue will change it to the red. So it's complete opposite. For the propped fracturing treatment, uh, maybe the fracture that have the most problem could be identified and those does not reduce in width much. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, oh, I can, now I see why you ask the flow back. Yes, yeah, if they have problem, then maybe from here, we can get some idea whether the prop, which fracture heat has the problem, has more problem supported 
Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, right now, I, I don't have much flowback data. So you can see, answer all of you guys' questions. A lot of it is relied on the data set. So if we can get more data and then we can uh, using our algorithm, I think we can get a more beautiful fracture geometry. And I'm more confident about uh, uh, the result we, we get. Do you use a vertically homogeneous model for the rock property? Yeah, so here uh, for, for our hydraulic fracture model, we're using vertically homogeneous model. We do not consider the, uh, the, the heterogeneity in the vertical uh, section. So, uh, Con or Dr. Wu. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. Was, this was just a fantastic talk. And, and really, you hold the record for answering the most questions after a presentation ever. <laughs> it, was, it was just fantastic in terms of how you addressed them all in the talk. And um, I, I, um, Gong will like me to, to remind everyone that your, your um, presentation has been recorded. And uh, in that recording, it'll indicate um, your published papers where they can find more, uh, more information. So uh, uh, on behalf of, of, of um, Gong and myself and, and our colleagues, well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Professor Wu also hold another record today. I didn't say it at the very beginning. I think uh, we we didn't want, uh, uh, but one thing clear, Professor Wu is the first uh, women speaker this year for the uh, uh, theory. And you will, we will see more female speaker coming forward uh, next. Uh, we look forward, uh, some of you in the audience, uh, uh, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to John and or myself. And even more so, uh, Professor Wu is also an Asian female speaker. <laughs> so this is, this, John Olsen, you, uh, Professor Olsen, you will be more than happy <laughs> to see this happening. Um, thanks for your post on the LinkedIn as well, uh, John Olsen, Professor John Olsen. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thanks Great job. Hey, hey, gone. Oh, hey, wow. I, I, I tell you, th these people worked you really hard. I mean, there must have been 50 questions. <laughs> wow, just fantastic. Just absolutely fantastic. Anyways, I'm going to sign off, Con. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so thank you for your invitation and organization. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah very good. I mean, thank you, you really got people interested. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.